So my name is Jamie Bresnahan. Um, I'm one of the PGY4s. I'm one of the chiefs at Jefferson. Um, here to tell you a little bit about our program today. So these are some obligatory Jefferson slides. Uh, Jefferson's a pretty big hospital, ranked in eight different specialties, top 10 in a few different specialties. Um, there's 14 hospitals in total. The primary ones that you guys will rotate with uh, uh, if you end up at our program would be McGee, Rothman, uh, Thomas Jefferson University Hospital, and JHN, Jefferson Hospital for Neuroscience. Back in 2008, uh, or sorry, 2018, Jefferson and McGee formally merged. Uh, previously, Jefferson and McGee had a close relationship through the, our model system database, but uh, were actually different institutions. So in 2018, they uh, officially merged. One thing that's kind of neat about Jefferson is that we have uh, Jefferson actually bought Philadelphia University and then creatively renamed it Thomas Jefferson University. Uh, and part of uh, the previous Philadelphia University was the College of Rehabilitation Sciences. So our Dean, Dr. Williams, or sorry, our chair, Dr. Williams is also the Dean of the College of Rehabilitation Sciences at Jefferson. They have um, a PT program, OT program, speech program, and lots of basic science research. So it's a good opportunity for some collaboration and research if you're interested in that. So welcome to virtual Philadelphia. Um, I think one of the best things about Jefferson is that we're in the center of center city. So this uh, pink area on the square here is Jefferson's campus. Uh, the main hospital is right here and uh, McGee is up here. Um, so pretty much most of your time is spent in center city. You can really walk just about everywhere. Uh, it's really a, a pretty awesome place to, to be. Within Center City, there's things like the Liberty Bell, there's horse-drawn carriages. It's a pretty cool place to walk around. Love Park is right in front of McGee. Um, City Hall is a, is a pretty cool building. You get to walk through that every day. And then uh, if, you know, the Eagles won the, uh, the Super Bowl two years ago, but don't tell that to anybody in Philadelphia as far as everybody's concerned here. They are still the uh, Super Bowl champions and probably will be forever. Uh, but it's always fun to, to get down to the, where the stadiums are in South Philly and, and watch some games too. In terms of our program breakdown, we have uh, seven general PM&R residents per year, and then we have one combined PEDS PM&R resident per year. Your PGY2 year is um, eight months inpatient and then four months outpatient. The outpatient PGY2 year is meant to kind of give you an, an introduction to broad, different, as, very di different aspects of PM&R. So you might do, um, you know, a Monday with sports med, a Tuesday with spasticity, Wednesday with our resident clinic, Thursday with uh, headache attending, and Friday with pain or something like that. And there's two different two-month rotations. Um, so you get a pretty good general idea of what PM&R is as a PGY2 between your inpatient rotations and then your outpatient rotations. As you transition into PGY-3 and PGY-4, you do less inpatient, more outpatient, um, and then your outpatient rotations become kind of like dedicated rotations. So if you're, you know, you might do a spine rotation, MSK ultrasound rotation, and EMG rotation. PGY-3, uh, it's a little bit flexible, but usually it's four months inpatient, six months outpatient, and then two months of consults on our acute SCI service. As a PGY-4, it's usually two months inpatient, um, eight months outpatient, and then two more months of consults, uh, general consults. Some of the more uh, kind of nitty gritty things, call, as a PGY-2, you take call three to four times per month. As a PGY-3, call decreases to two to three times per month. Uh, you're also on weekend consults once every other month, which is supposed to be um, about a half day kind of thing where you go in, see some new consults that are in the hospital, help out the attending, write some notes, and then um, you carry a, a, a phone that you take home with you in case there's any, any issues that come up, you can answer them over the phone. As a PGY-4, you only take call about once every other month. Somewhere between six and eight per year is kind of how it shakes out as a PGY-4. Um, all of our call is in-house at McGee, um, so you get a post-call day afterwards. 
salary is listed there. Um, and then in terms of days off, you get 20 vacation days. You can take the vacation days however you want. So you don't have to take them, you know, one week at a time or something like that. You can take one here, one there. A lot of people will take a post call day, be will take a vac uh, call shift before their vacation so they can kind of extend their vacation with their post call day, which is pretty nice. Um, you also get five educational days per year and one personal day per year. I think one of the, the most interesting things about our program is that it's, it's a pretty old program and the, uh, the different rotations that you have clinically have been kind of fostered over a long period of time to give you the, the best of what our institution feels is a well-rounded PMNR training program. Um, so at Jefferson, you're primarily, these are just listed for each institution that we rotate at, the different rotations that you'll do. So at Jefferson, you're doing acute spinal cord injury consults, general consults. There's an MSK ultrasound uh, rotation as an outpatient, headache clinic, spasticity clinic, ALS clinic. Um, we have an EMG lab at Jefferson. You also can do pain at Jefferson. At McGee, we have two SCI services that are staffed by residents, a TBI service, stroke, medically complex service, and then also uh, you do outpatient follow-ups at McGee. We also rotate at Moss with the Temple residents. Um, and at Moss, we primarily do amputee and then also an outpatient rotation, which is kind of a mix of neuromodulation and chronic pain, as well as an EMG outpatient rotation. Bryn Mawr is a, is a pretty cool place to rotate. Um, you have the option to do a TBI rotation at Bryn Mawr. They have a disorders of consciousness unit, which is pretty cool to see. And the primary attending for the disorders of consciousness, consciousness unit is Dr. Mania Panda, who is the RIC trained guy and really loves teaching. It's a, it's a really great educational experience. Also gives you a little bit of an idea of what a private practice PM&R can be like. Uh, and there's a lot of moonlighting opportunities at Bryn Mawr that, that a lot of our residents will take advantage of as well. Pediatrics, we do at AI DuPont Children's Hospital, which is uh, Jefferson's Children's Hospital. Um, and then we spend a decent amount of time at the Rothman Institute, which if you guys are from the East Coast, you've probably heard of. It's a pretty big orthopedic sports spine type institute. Uh, it's in Philadelphia, based in Philadelphia, but they kind of have branches out in, into New Jersey and even up into New York now. We also have a model system in spinal cord injury, one of 14 model systems. Our territory is basically north to New York City, south to Atlanta, and then west to uh, Pittsburgh. It's been, it was established in 1978 and it's been continuously funded since then. So it's a pretty well-funded, robust program. Um, since its inception, it's always been a joint venture between Jefferson and McGee. So Jefferson kind of serves as the um, acute Part of that and then McGee uh, is more of the rehabilitation and chronic follow-up portion of the model system. In the last 42 years since the model system has been around we've served over 6,000 uh, spinal cord injured patients which is pretty cool. A picture this is Dr. Detuno's picture he was our founding chair um, and was uh, director of the model system uh, and a pretty big name in, in PM&R. A little bit more from the kind of background program history, attending highlights. Um, Jefferson's been around PM&R pretty much since the inception. Dr. Cruzen was largely considered the founder of PM&R and he learned uh, from Dr. Schmidt when, Dr. when Cruzen was a medical student at Jefferson. Um, and these two went on to become uh, chapter member, charter members of AB PM&R and AA PM&R. We've had a division of rehabilitation medicine at Jefferson since 1959 and a department since uh, 1969. So we just recently celebrated our 50th anniversary with a, a great party towards the end of last year. It was a lot of fun um, to honor Dr. Detuno. 1978, like I mentioned, that was when our model system database was established. Um, and then we've had countless attendings. I listed some of our attendings um, and people who graduated from this program who have gone on to become AAPM and our presidents. I may have missed some. Um, but we've had numerous others who have gone on to serve as presidents of other organizations, ACRM, AAP, Asia, ABPMNR, ISPRM, NANS, and uh, a whole lot more who have gone on to become department chairs and program directors at other institutions. So I think that's pretty cool to be part of uh, a relatively large program that has a strong history and, and kind of roots throughout the country. Current program leadership, um, Dr. Williams is our chair. 
He's also, like I mentioned before, the Dean of the College of Rehabilitation Sciences, and he primarily does spinal cord injury medicine. Dr. Mallow is our program director. He does uh, sports medicine. And then Dr. Freed is the CMO of McGee and also the vice chair of our department, and he does a mix of spinal cord injury and pain. Uh, I think one of the strongest parts of our program is our, our didactic series. So we have every week you have five hours of truly protected didactic time. Um, you don't round before didactics. You don't round after didactics. You'll never carry your pager during didactics. The attendings write their own notes on Wednesday mornings when we have didactics. So it's a, it's a and that's the, been the expectation for years and years here where you're, you know, these services are meant to run on their own. They're not meant to require residents to be there. They're meant for you to get your education um, in the best way possible. And on Wednesday mornings, that's definitely didactics. I think one thing that's also unique about our program, we do an eight week to, um, anatomy course with cadavers. This has started years and years ago and continues today where the PGY fours and the attendings go into the um, anatomy lab and dissect cadavers prior to didactics. And then the PGY twos and threes um, have quizzes and then also work directly with PGY fours who did the dissections to review all of the muscles um, origin, insertion, innervation, uh, um, you know, brachial plexus, and uh, how to test the different muscles. So it's a super in-depth course. And then just recently, two years ago, we started adding fresh frozen cadavers where we'll do, um, we'll use them to do different types of ultrasound guided injections, which is really nice to have the opportunity to kind of do that on a fresh frozen cadaver before you start interacting with patients and you want to ask questions, but you might be concerned because you don't want the patient to feel like they don't know what you're doing or something like that. I think it's just a really great uh, teaching opportunity for our residents. Research is, is not a requirement of our program, but most of our residents do participate in research. Um, it's, we have a pretty good infrastructure in place because of the College of Rehabilitation Sciences. Uh, we have the, we've had residents in the past go through AAP's RMSTP program, and that infrastructure is in place if it's something that you're interested in. Dr. Graves is our vice chair of research for our department, which is a, a great person to have on board. He can kind of guide you through any type of project that you're interested in, and he also has a whole team of st statistic people who can um, help you get through some of that stuff if maybe that's not your, your uh, bread and butter, which is... It's just nice to have that in, in your pocket. I've used Dr. Graves a number of times and we've worked on a few projects together. He's a super nice guy, very welcoming and loves working with residents. In terms of educational funding, um, what's listed there is, is what you get at baseline, but if you present at conferences, you get additional funding for presentations and it's based on whether it's a case report and, or, or a research study and then also kind of where you are in terms of authorship. These are uh, some obligatory We Have Fun Too pictures showing different things that we do as a group as residents. Um, Dr. Williams definitely throws some really nice Christmas parties and things of that nature. We'll see what happens this year with COVID, but that's been a historically been a, a great opportunity for faculty and residents to kind of bond together. In terms of fellowships, we have uh, in-house or in-program fellowship in spasticity management. It's pretty unique. You get to do one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. You know, there's a guy that we rotate with who works out in the main line who does a, his entire practice is botulinum toxin injections and diagnostic motor nerve blocks. So you get a ton of hands-on experience doing that. You also get um, hands-on experience doing intrathecal baclofen trials and doing all kinds of intrathecal pump management and troubleshooting. That's mostly with Dr. Salino at Moss who has six or 700 uh, intrathecal pump patients. He has a really large int intrathecal practice. Um, so that's kind of a unique, unique fellowship that we have. We also were just approved for an SCI fellowship, uh, just trying to figure out when that's going to start. I think Dr. Gustafson is going to be in charge of it, is planning on, um, having the first fellow for next year, hopefully. And then also through other aspects of Jefferson, we have um, in-house fellowships in sports medicine, sports and spine, which is just at Rothman, pain medicine, which is through Jeff Anesthesia, neuromuscular medicine and headache medicine, which are through neurology, and then also functional medicine and palliative Five care. Five minutes. 
our graduates, you know, I think one thing about our program is because we, I think we have a pretty well-rounded um, training program, we tend to get people that have very diverse interests. So if you look at our fellowship list and, and where people have gone, they've kind of gone into very different positions. There's some people who are uh, very academic and do lots of research. There's other people who want to be in private practice. There's some who want to do all inpatient. There's some who want to do all interventional things and outpatient. So I think it's nice to have a good mix of, of co-residents that you can bounce different ideas off. And I think when you look at our uh, fellowship match list from the past couple of years, that's something that definitely stands out. It's just the diversity there. So it's kind of a, a summary slide here. Um, these are the, the kind of four things that I put together that I think best represents why Jeff PM&R. So I think we have a history of excellence. We've had you know, more than 50 years of strong academic success. And we've only had three department chairs. Dr. Williams took over in 2016. So really in 46 years, we've only had two department chairs. And I think that represents a consistency and dedication to, to Jefferson. There's also a diverse and unique uh, opportunity for clinical experiences, which I think gives you a very well-rounded training. Um, I mentioned our didactic program and anatomy course. I think that kind of ties into a top-notch education that you'll get. We've had a 100% board pass rate. Um, there's also citywide courses in Philadelphia where we get together with uh, Temple and Penn and everybody hosts a different portion, EMG, GATE, and um, um, orthotics and prosthetic courses for the entire uh, Philadelphia residency programs. And you have a ton of research support from widely published faculty members. Location, location, location. Um, I think being in the center of Center City is awesome. I can walk to and from work every single day. Uh, the, Philadelphia is a very affordable city. It's about two thirds the cost of the, the other major cities in that kind of East Coast beltway of cities. Um, City SIPs is cool. We get together pretty much every week as residents and go to happy hour to different places in the city that, that uh, have kind of deals. And Philadelphia is also pretty uniquely uh, oriented so that you can easily get to the beach or over to the Pocono Mountains and, and lots of before. nature around. And uh, last but not least, I think I mentioned this, but just the atmosphere. We have a, a very diverse set of residents. We have a great resident uh, retreat every year. Um, and truly protected half-day didactics, and uh, also faculty support in taking vacations when you want them. So the expectation is that you can take vacation days whenever, um, and your faculty, like I mentioned, the, the different services are, are made to run independent of residence. They're just, you're supposed to be there to learn. And last but not least, we, uh, we're finally on the Instagram. So give us a follow, jeffersonpmnr underscore, uh, residency. And uh, that's the end of our presentation. So I'm happy to take any questions in the time we have left. And we can continue to use the chat function uh, to pose questions as well. Uh, so Tiffany asks, what kinds of community service outreach opportunities are offered at Jefferson? Uh, so I would say the, the easiest community service and outreach things to do are, are through the model system at McGee. So they do lots of um, uh, wheelchair rugby, wheelchair basketball. They have a, a, a surfing thing to do down at the beach. There's also um, our pediatrics program runs a... Uh, um, something with with kids every year as well so there's different ways you can get involved and there. at this point we will transition over